So in my last video, I tried to learn a little bit about the goth stack, and that's Go, HTMX, and Temple. Overall, it worked pretty good. I just, I'm just not a fan of how verbose Go is. I like to write my bugs, and I like to ship my bugs. So that's why I went back to TypeScript and the ecosystem that I know best. And we are going to be using Hano in this video, where basically it's uh, kind of like Express, but it's blazingly fast, ultra fast, and lightweight, whatever that means, batteries included. Probably maintained by like one random person. Honestly, I haven't looked into it. But let's just go ahead and look through the HANA docs. Um, I'm just kidding. We're not going to look through the docs. Let's just go ahead and start coding. So what I have here is a project that basically when I run it, I say bun dev and it runs a Tailwind CLI command that watches my Tailwind files and compiles them and makes an output file. And then also runs my, my HANA server or HONO. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't really care. You guys can correct me and I know you guys will anyway. But after running the server, I can go to localhost 3000 and here is my beautiful website that has absolutely nothing. I'm also bringing in Daisy UI to keep it super simple. So the way this library works is it's very similar to Express. Honestly, it seems like it's just Express. You define some git post patch put delete endpoints. You specify a route. You can do path parameters like this. And then you can access those parameters saying c.rec.params. So that should give us post ID. And basically, I'm not using JSX. I'm not using React. I'm just keeping this as simple as possible with templating. And the templating that I'm doing is I have these pages. So if I go over here, we have pages. And I have an index page and a post page. Let's look at the post page real quick. And you'll see that I basically just have a bunch of function calls. So I'm doing a lazy approach to JSX. Um, I'm just doing function calls and then I'm doing like string interpolations using uh, dot join when you kind of loop over like an array. So let's walk through the code a little bit. I have the post page, which when this gets invoked, it's basically going to call a layout function, which runs through this and generates a basic layout. And then we have like a slot here, which injects um, a header, some content, and a footer. Now, I don't know why this is a, a row. Maybe there should just be a column over here. But you can just write normal HTML like you would in any other templating language. And the idea is I have these little helper functions where I can like pass in um, a list of things and it's going to render them out in a flexbox column or a flexbox row. But the main takeaway here is that this takes in some content and a title. The title gets interpolated here. I'm bringing in HTMX from a script tag, and then I'm also bringing in our Tailwind styling right here in the head tag as well. So again, this is like a slot. I'm passing in uh, the children, I guess you could say, and we are basically taking the content here. So if I want to make this a little bit cleaner, I can say content HTML is equal to await this. Go ahead and use it. And now if we were to dive into the content, so this is calling the content function, which I'm kind of trying to emulate a React server component without all the smart stuff under the hood that, you know, the hydration that React gives you. Basically, when a component runs, you can just like render other components and await on them. So I'm like rendering out an articles component and a comments component. That's in a promise all, so they're going to run concurrently. And then when they're done, I just go ahead and like render them out to the page. And then we can go and look at article. What this is doing is this is fetching a post from, and this is just a hard code. I'm not using a database, right? This is just a hard code of function. But the idea is at some point this would connect to a database. We could bring in Drizzle or some type of ORM like Prisma. And basically I just keep on, you know, fetching data in my little components here and pass that data into whatever I render. So that's kind of the approach. And you'll see like I have all these like random components, like a form component that takes in a text area and a submit button. And at some point this write component is rendered out, uh, I guess down here at the bottom of this column. If I were to check this out, let's see if uh, if I go to posts slash one, two, three, this is some of the stuff that's kind of rendering out from that view. Honestly, I don't know how this is going to work out. I mean, it seems like the code's kind of hard to read. Maybe I do feel like I need to bring in JSX, but I'm trying to also use HTMX as well. So for example, we got this form post, just focus on the form, disregard all this other garbage that's everywhere. In fact, I could probably just like delete all this. Okay, so now we got a form and a submit button. So what we could do here is I'm gonna try to do something different on the page when I submit this form. And so we have the ability to wrap this stuff and use HTMX like we did in the previous video. So let's go to this write form. And inside the form, we could potentially change this up a little bit. 
Now the form itself, like I don't have to use that form component. I can just do back ticks like this and then we can just render out different things. So like, for example, I could render out that submit button here um, and then I could just do this. Okay, this should still work if I refresh the page. Does it still show? Okay. And so now we can actually do like an HTMX post here. So for example, I could say posts and then we could still interpolate the post ID. So I need to pass it in. And then we can, yeah, we could just hit a comments endpoint. Okay, so we'll do post slash comments. And what happens when you invoke this? Well, we're going to basically append something. So we'll say like swap in our HTML on the cont comments tag. Is there anything else we need with HTMX? I think I need a trigger of submit here. So like it'll actually like catch it. Okay, so now it's doing a push request to this post one to three comments. And so what we could do is go back to our main entry point here and we can make a new post method. We could say comments. And what we're going to do is we're going to provide a callback here. And what we need to first do is basically persist the comments. So I can say like create comment and I could say c.rec.param post ID. And I think also in the body, we should get the comment that was passed in. So I think we're going to wait on this and I can just go ahead and go to data. We'll say comments, say export const create comment. And really you just want to go ahead and say like const comments is equal to an empty array. We can just push into it. So now we can import this and this probably needs to be rec body. It looks like I can get form data like this. So I'm guessing I could get the form data. And this will have a comment on it. Post ID, I think I need to like parse int this because my code sucks. And this will be git of comment, I believe. Um, so the idea is basically we should create the comment and that'll store inside of an array. And then finally we can just say return c.html. And then we could just like re-render some type of template. So in our case, if we wanted to render out comments, what we could do is just get all the comments again. Go ahead and import that. And then we could just render out some comments. So I'll say, honestly, at this point, I'm just making content to make content. So like, let's just render out some comments here and we'll join this together with strings. There we go. Now we got code that you cannot even legibly read. It's too confusing to read. But hopefully now when I make a post request here, HTMX should be able to take those comments that come back and swap them in that other page that we were kind of working on right here. So right here, let's try it out. I'm going to go here and just submit and notice that um, we do get back a nice post. Cool. And I think that's basically it. Now, I think the reason it's not coming back with more stuff is because if you go to get comments. It never actually like returns the comments that are here. So let's just do this. We're going to return comments. Let's type this, this, and um, do that. Okay, let's try this. So now it should actually persist. Let's just go ahead and submit it, submit it again, and there we have it. So I'm actually going to try to keep building this out. There's a application that a friend wants me to kind of work on. Uh, it should just be a simple questionnaire site, but I think maybe using this with htmx might be really nice and then getting this deployed to railway i mean this should use like very little memory compared to um next.js and so it shouldn't cost me much money to host it either but i'm just having some fun playing around some different approaches to building out web applications trying to avoid doing client-side javascript just for the fun of it and also just playing around with like different ways to achieve the same thing in just a different way um because why not Anyway, that's all I got. I know this video is kind of pointless, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching me fumble around with some different approaches. At the very least, I would say go check out Hano. Uh, it seems like it's a pretty cool replacement for Express. If you tend to use a bun instead of Express, I think it's pretty fast. And I will say that when I save stuff, it's like almost instant that like stuff is ready to go again. So I do like that. I just need to hook in live reload so that when I save my files, like my HTML will refresh for me. But yeah, that's about it. Have a good day. Happy coding.